Hello and welcome everybody, this is your host, Leerbach, and you're just in time for something a bit different. I've never done a toy review or anything like that, so kind of go easy on me, this is my first time, and I'm going to be trying a few different things here, but I'm going to review something that is new, yet nostalgic, which is pretty much just about anything nowadays, isn't it? What I'm referring to is Bionicle. So for those of you that don't know, which would probably be almost any of you, I am a huge fan of the original Bionicles. Like back in like 2001 when they first came out, I've been collecting them since then. And I felt I stopped collecting them at around the time the Glatorians came out. It's about the time when they changed to these actual hands. I didn't like them at first. I've kind of come to accept them. But yeah, so... Here's the thing. I really, really loved Bionicle. And even after the story started getting a little... I don't want to say wonky. I was a little crazy. It was about the time of the... Uh, Bantoka and Mystica sets. Those are the last ones I collected. Um, those two being co haven't come out in the same year. Those uh, collected a few of the Fantoka, and that was about it. Um, no, I also collected some of the Mystica. Yeah, because I had the little, the little uh, shooter for it. But yeah. Um, so what do I think of these in comparison? to the old one. That's probably what you're you're wondering. I like these a lot better than the, than the original ones. The original ones were like, you know, really old and kind of, for their time they were amazing, but they were really kind of crappy in comparison. They made improvements every set. Really, you'd want to compare these to probably the um, fifth, fourth or fifth generation sets is when they started using a, a universal system kind of similar to what they're using here only this one's a bit different um, in fact I should have something you know. the original system used these kind of, this kind of thing you can kind of see how it works you know arm and leg lower arm or leg then you had hands though so this is a special piece that you get the idea. Um, here we go. This right here in my hands. This is what they use for the hands. So yeah, instead for the bionicle line, they use this pop Tahu's arm off here. They use this, which is kind of the same thing. If we pop the armor off, you can kind of note it's almost exactly the same thing. You now you got upper arm and lower leg, upper arm and leg pieces, lower arm and leg pieces, and then what you'd use for the hands. The only difference being is that what you'd use for the hands originally could also be used to put feet together. Also, the biggest difference here is you notice these have some very peculiar ball joints, primarily because. There, there you go. Had to look back at Tahu to see how it hooked up. You can hook up armor. Every armor has a little ball joint holder. So you just kind of hook that up. Peg it into place. And you got an armored. Well, in this case, an armored arm and an armored Toa. Also, I really like the new weapons. They are pretty awesome compared to the old ones. And the old ones were pretty were pretty good. They've held up pretty well. Um, for the most part. Um, really, if you want to compare compare these to the to their original counterparts, you'd want to look at something like the I guess their late their last counterpart their last counterpart would be the the Mystica or Myst the Mystica or Fantoka sets. Um, which 
when they first came out, I didn't even know they, they were using the original Toas because at the, at that point they were using um, the they had the, they had three generations of Toas. They had the originals, and they had the ones that came before, and then they had the ones that came after. And I never remembered the names of the, of the others. I just remember the names of the first three. So yeah, or the first the first six, I should say. Um, I got. These ones in particular because these are the these are the best looking ones I thought I or I thought at the time looked the best. Um, and I've got to say one thing about this: if you look at one of the original pictures of the Toas, um, which should be appearing on the screen here, if not, sorry. Um, all the Toas looked this looked the same. They used the same exact parts. The only difference is that Onua and Pohatu were shaped slightly differently. I think Onua actually had extra pieces in, in him to allow his head to be like to poke lower and out than everyone else. Like he kind of looked like he was hunched over a little. Pohatu's body was flipped upside down because of the way his gimmick worked. Everyone had a everyone with the Toas had a gear gimmick. They had these gears in their arms that when you twisted the back of them their arm would go up and down, kind of like what you see with these, except the big difference is, of course, of course, Kopaka, just performance issues, the big difference is, when you let go of these, when you let go of these, let me show it with Pohatu, when you let go of these, they stay, or at least they should stay. And of course, his, he falls down the minute I put him down. Um, oh, that might be one. Let me try it again. Okay. No. There. Okay. He stays. The originals. The the originals. You, you kind of saw how Kapaka was going. <laughs> they underperformed. They kind of you just use them basically. Uh, uh, yeah, they couldn't stay. They couldn't keep their pose like these cut, like these can, or mostly can. <laughs> um, Pock is a little harder to show off here. Um, some of them even had. Oh, and there goes his mask. A dual arm filling mechanic, though most of them, most of that that was reserved, I think, primarily for. Gali and Onua because they had uh, Gali had hooks and Onua had claws. Um, everyone else just had a single gear. Um, and every every one of the bodies there were the same. So you know, they built one, you built them all. Even when they moved on to Toa Nuva, it was the same thing as the original bodies. Just they had armor and new equipment. Like everyone pretty much was dual wielding at that point. So both so both arms functioned in that. In this way, pretty much. Um, actually, let, let me pull the arms out a little more. Maybe that's the problem. Um, so yeah, so all the toes were pretty much the same, and that's kind of how it was. Like all the toes were designed the same. You built one, you built them all, um, and this kind of persisted throughout the entirety of the series. Paka, you're not you're not doing any good good right now. Uh, Oh, those... I, uh, crap. Comatorans, I guess it'd be. That, that doesn't really make any sense for anyone now, does it? Because I, I don't think they ever described... I don't think... Because I think these are the first guys that were never... They never state whether or not these guys were Matorans or not. Which, for those of you who never... Those who are hearing me about all this stuff, Matorans are basically like the basic villagers, like the little dudes that the Toa is protected. Toas were guardians. Matorans were little little dudes, like about uh, about up to here on the Toa. And that's going by the original look. The original looks like about half the size of actually about half the size of Pahatu here, and Pahatu's the smallest of the three. Actually, I think he might be the smallest of the toes in general, which is kind of a little odd. 
But yeah, he's also the simplest one to build. He's the he's the one that uses the most basic building stuff. Um, it's also why I'm glad I bought him first, because it kind of it kind of helps ease you into the others. Like so far with these three, and I've seen with uh, I know for a fact with Onua, very different builds from each other. Like they use the same body, but like the way they're constructed is slightly different. Like for example, like I said, Pilatu is a very basic build, you know. Legs, body, and just with all others, I'm gonna have to pop his, gonna have to take his cape off. Uh, the cape on Palazzo, by the way, is not in the box. So if you're thinking, oh, oh, that's the one thing that makes me unique, no, no, you're getting basically just this minus the two spikes here because those are extra. Pe oh, you might get those. They, these are like extra leftovers that are in the box. So you might, you might get them or you might get some extra, you know, connectors. But yeah, the one thing that's similar, that's shared between each of the Toas is this. This is where the gear system works. You see these little four axis pieces here. This one this one's the one you hold to turn. It turns them and that's what makes it move. It, then you also have this piece here that acts as a connector for arms that aren't going to be aren't controlled by the gear. I'm glad to see that make a return. That's been gone since the third generation of Toa. The third since the Voya Nui, which I think would be the fifth series. Um, is that all the others had like this interesting little gimmick all beforehand, and then they just kind of. It's all gone. It's all gone now. Um, so yeah, like I said, Pahatu is the kind of the basic guy, you know, the basics of them all. Then I got Tahu. Now you may note that Tahu is quite a big guy. Standing next to Pahatu, yeah, it kind of makes Pahatu look like one of the villagers in comparison, doesn't he? Heck, his swords probably make him look like that. Poor little, poor little Pohatu. He's the he's the uh, Ed, Edward Elric of the group. <laughs> uh, that's a Full Metal Alchemist joke for those of you who don't watch Full Metal Alchemist, and you should. In fact, you know, skip the first series, just go straight to Brotherhood. So anyway, here we go. We have Pohatu. Like I said, he's pretty big. You're probably wondering, well, how's that so? Well, new to this, at least new to me anyway, are these little kind of extender bricks or extender pegs you hook them up to one of the like say in this case you hook them up hook it up to the leg piece and you get a little bit of an extension this is also on the feet you can very clearly see here and if I wanted to I could probably pop this off I'm so terrified I'm gonna break those things so many of my old ones have, like, the joints up here are just broken, but these, oddly enough, are a lot stronger. You could, like, hook it up like that, or you could just take it off altogether and just have a simple leg, which, for Tahu, just kind of doesn't work because of the way he, the way they, the pieces they use. They use several chest pieces here, that would be chest, or they would be chest pieces on the old hero, the old hero factory stuff, which... I bought one. I bought this guy because I thought he was pretty cool and I wanted to see what Hero Factory was all about. And so, and I was not disappointed. He's missing a few pieces because they're on Kafaka. <laughs> um, also, these pieces are supposed to be ice blue like that, except I switched them out with Kapakas. Yeah. I tend to try to make my own custom creations. Um, okay. Try to make sure this is on the right side. So, yeah. Um,. So Kapaka has a lot of extenders to make him taller and look a lot more, oddly enough, a lot more bulky, despite the fact that he uses the same, similar kind of chest plate as everyone else, the similar sized one. Um, then you have this chest plate, which is different for me from Toa to Toa, um, which goes on. I think, no, they're not all gold, huh? There's a uh, Kapaka's. They kind of have that similar 
similar-ish design. Like you can tell this is the hero, but they kind of each have their own unique version. Um, and then if we pop his back off here, and you can kind of see he has these uh, shorter pieces here too. These are kind of, these are unique to Tahu. Also, so are these back wing blades here. They're actually, I think, supposed to be separate blades for when he uh, goes, when he turns his uh, blades into surfboard mode. Because one of Tahu's uh, hobbies, when he's not saving the world, is lava surfing. This I love because this is very reminiscent of the original Tahu Nuva toy, when he had the two blades that you could hook together the same way. Um, only I don't think they were nearly as good back then, but, you know. They made it work somehow. So you'd hook it up. Um, me. And now we have a armless Tahu riding on lava. <laughs> the one complaint if I had any is when you pull them out, the pegs stay in the feet. Uh, that actually reminds me of one thing I need to show. I need to go back and show off what I did with the uh, with Pahatu. His blades, you might notice they're a bit different from the original toy. The original toy actually uses, uh, oh, actually uses these black connector pieces because the black connector piece is the only thing that allows it the friction held design of these boomerang blades. Instead, I'm using a blue uh, half connector with a with a peg tip and the way I did that is I took some the metal pieces off of gut off of gum wrappers and just kind of very carefully wrapped it around once put it in see if it worked didn't work okay wrapped again so and so forth for those of you saying gross keep in mind there's a piece of paper behind this tin foil this tin foil and stickiness behind it <laughs> Um, at least that's how I'm justifying it. If you don't like it that way, uh, here, I hear shoe polish works, but, you know, I had to work with what I had. Um, I also kind of painted it black with a permanent, with a Sharpie. Um, to, so it blend in a little better. Instead, I use that instead of this, because I can pop it onto, because his gimmick is he pops, is he holds, the, he wears the blades as hover pads. Yeah. The original Pahatu had speed on his side. He also comes with this little nifty blade that he can use when he's in hover mode. But the original Pahatu is all about speed and swiftness. In fact, his, his gimmick was, you know, he kicks things. <laughs> um, yeah, he actually came with a, a ball, a little rock ball. They used to play uh, Kohli matches. K O H L I. It, it's kind of like soccer, but that's kind of all they go into. It's kind of like soccer. <laughs> uh, but except they use rocks instead of actual soccer balls. But that's okay because they're all machines. <laughs> or like some sort of living organic machine life. Kind of a little confusing now that I think about it. The Bionicle universe is a bit weird. So yeah, um, kind of went over all the things I did, all the custom work I did with Pahatu. Um, no, I didn't, haven't done anything yet to Tahu. I haven't really been able to find anything yet to, to add on to him. Um, one of the things I'm considering is taking one of these, uh, taking this and replacing one of his uh, armor pieces here with it to kind of give him like a blue fire effect for on one arm. Do something like that. So he has kind of like a blue like a a blue fire effect, but you kind of can't tell when you have his other armor piece on. Um but like I said, I'm still considering it whether or not I'll make it a permanent thing or not. As far as this goes, it's pretty easy to customize, and the more I start playing with it, the more I start realizing how much more easily it is to customize something 
and just swap pieces out than it was with the original. The original you had to use like pegs and stuff to like swap pieces out and when doing certain armor it became really difficult. Other armor it wasn't so bad. Um, but yeah, so that was Tahu. I really I really do enjoy Tahu too. Um, yeah, he's huge compared to Pahatu. And next we have Kopaka, the smaller or the middle child, I guess you could say. And real quick, this is not his original weapon. For this, his original weapon is actually a similar blade to Kopa to uh, Pahatu's that sticks on. You're supposed to like stick it on sideways. So I can't. Um, so I can gonna borrow your little knife there and you're supposed to hold it like that I didn't like it like that so I tried like this Oops. actually it's supposed to be down like that I tried like this nah, I didn't like it so I was like okay what am I gonna do to try to fix it oh well, well, I tried like nope nope that gets in the way and that becomes a pain and so I saw I had an extra one of these lying around because, let's face it, who didn't? If you collect the barnacles, who didn't? They had them all over the place. They used these for claws. They used these for fingers for some of the larger builds. It was uh, Ta Takua Nuva's original blade. And I hooked it up like that, and immediately I started thinking, why didn't LEGO do this from the beginning? I know they have molds for these still. I know it. They wouldn't get rid of something so awesome looking. The Crescent Blade. I had enough of these. I actually had a gun. Actually, had a a few Gundams in my time. I'd use these. They fit in the hands of certain. They fit in the hands of certain Gundams re very easily. So yeah, he's got a bit of a ice axe. Um, actually, I don't know. Like this, didn't I? And he also has a shield, which I kind of like flipping around. So you got like shield mode, and then you got like a a battle stabby stab. And the way I'm doing that is basically use the peg here to lock it. Um, and just to let you know, seriously, Kopaka, behave yourself. These light gray pieces here. These aren't supposed to go in these. It's supposed to be again two of these black pegs. But again, the big problem the big problem is when you get into his gimmick, which they're not his gimmick, his other form. Ice skates or ice skis. Well when you have both of those they tend to go all the way in and then they get stuck and you gotta pull them out. Yep, right there. The black peg sticking out. You have to pull out. D this one doesn't fix the problem completely, but what it does fix is if you get it in just right, this peg here doesn't lock in like Pohatu's, but instead acts kind of like a semi-guard and a little placeholder, like it keeps it in place so it keeps it from, well, doesn't keep it completely from moving, but you can kind of center it again pretty easily, just slide it into place and it just kind of holds it in there just because the shape is similar enough. And so yeah, then you can just pull it out and the pieces aren't there. I've still got to figure out what I'm going to do with Todd though. Um, yeah, I just realized this blue piece actually finally came out without a, uh, without a problem. It's another thing I've been having a problem with, the blue pieces come out, like, pop out, and they stay, just pop out, and now they're in his hands. Oh, that's annoying. So, yeah. Um. That screeching noise that his feet made. Ah. Scraping against the table. Mm. Mm. Uh. 
that gets me into their other gimmick um, that I forgot to mention. And actually, now would be a good time to mention. One thing you may have noticed is these guys have wear masks. A thing that I believe persisted even through Hero Factory. Though with Hero Factory, they were using the more traditional designs of a peg in the mouth and or a peg on the mask. Right here, you can see the Frost Beast goes into the mouth. Mouth has a hole. You insert peg. This started happening at the third series of Toa. This is the second generation, or actually, I guess you could say the uh, prequel generation when they had the original, the original, original Toas that no one knew about until that point. <laughs> yeah, kind of shows, kind of shows they kind of they kind of flew by the seat of the pants the series, and that's part of the thing that made it good. <laughs> They kind of they kind of flew out to the other pants. Um, but anyway, yeah. So they started doing that with the uh, with the toes, explaining the easy gimmick of you know combat, hit the mask, see who can knock the mask off first. They kind of explained that con that gimmick, and they also explained the mask collecting gimmick, which was kind of a, that one was a fun gimmick. Like you would you collect different colored masks, you, know, you could open up these these little packs and get different masks, and would you get a golden mask? That was one of the things. Um, and actually, just to let I should probably let you know, each one of these do come with a golden variant of their mask. But yeah, anyway, so let me just pop off Kopaka's head here since he wants to be a good example. I feel like TJ Omega whenever I'm talking to my toys. So right here, you have a pretty interesting gimmick here. Um, this I think is a pretty cool thing. So you have the head core here. Nothing new. They drastically changed a lot. But yeah, so you have the head core here and you have the the axle that goes in to lock it into place. Now if this is one of the original toys, it would stop it at that. But here you see we have these little peg hole looking things for the, where the heads go and got these little pegs extruding from the mask which seems like a perfect spot to set them in. And as is, they're pretty sturdy. You know? They don't come off easily, unless you hit the back of the, you hit the back the stem the back of this brain stem. Then they go flying off, or not. <laughs> uh, they seem to have some. Ha <laughs> ha! I wanted to prove that I could catch that on camera. They seem to have some connection. I probably took the worst Toa for that. All white on the camera. Yeah, it's like winter all over again. Winter is coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's kind of shows off with Bahatu. And well, that one just cut. Okay, I got stuck in his armor. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, every toe has this. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and show us. Oh, well, Artahu can be the one starting misbehaving now. Well, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of see how you kind of see how it works. I don't know what the point of this gimmick is, uh, but I do know it's kind of cool. And like I said, anything but a back shot, pretty much a good shot. But the back shot, you know, the way these are held on, kind of makes sense. And of course, you got the brainstem. Now, with that said, I should probably also talk about the big old skeleton in the room, or rather, the skulls, more or less. Um, by the way, custom scythe. Uh, this was from. This is originally one of Vizan's weapons. Uh, the cape from that I have with Pahatu. I turned it into a scythe, and it's been his main weapon ever since. Yeah. I had enough of these to make another to make three into one. Actually the middle one is actually a bigger variant that came from anyway. Came from an old, another toy set. Uh, another bonicle set. But yeah, so we have these skull spiders. Yeah that one's ugly. Uh, this one came with Tahu by the way. Mm. Well, I would have 
done a red to match. This one came with Pohatu. Um, you can tell by the scorpion stinger that it's supposed to be kind of like a spider variant. Uh, a scorpion spider. Something that would be very desert dwelling because Pohatu is a desert dweller. Which is part of the reason why I like the cape. The tattered cape very, looks very much desert dwelling. And this one came with Kopaka. So these are spider skulls. What they basically do is you pop the mask off of your Toa. And yes, I'm going to be torching Kopaka some more. <laughs> yeah, this will teach you a little... But this will teach you not to fall, fall under. And you're supposed to, like, you know, wrap it. The spider grips it grips down and now oh <laughs> if you grip it right I guess it can, I guess it can still pop off but still um, and I again chose the worst toe for this you know what down I'm getting hot to here so I'll just pop his mask off and there we go now you're supposed to be able to get these go these back in there too somehow like do something like uh, yeah the armor kind of gets in the way well at least you know the Toas are safe they're little protector dudes that are their little I guess the Matoran equivalent of this series I don't know I haven't played with any of those yet I do intend on buying one at least one of this one pick out which one. I want one that has some good armor pieces I can swap with like Pahatu. Particularly with his arm because Pahatu is the only Toa I've seen so far with a pure crystal arm. Which by the way, they stole my idea. I have a character that has a crystal arm. Uh, I know, original right? <laughs> actually, the character actually started as a Lego character. I designed him from a Bionicle set. He, he is actually the original Leervok. Um, yes, my namesake um, is a Lego toy that I made. Um, and so yeah, you got the head here, and then yeah, the I honestly don't know what the story is. I've been trying to find out the story behind these spider things, but all I've got to say is so far I'm not too impressed with them. I'm kind of glad they come with the series because there's no other way you get them to buy the buy those little things. So yeah. So yeah. Um, one last thing I do want to do is I kind of want to compare these to the uh, I guess I guess I guess I'll compare them to Vizan, because he's the only one I have that's still in one piece. That's not a custom character. And... Yeah, oh, well, he's been customized, but not, not not so much that he's a completely different character at this point. He's just got wings and... Yeah. <laughs> wings and a little shield plate back here. But yeah, this is... Basically, the original is an original uh, mock-up next to Tahu, which they're about the same size if you count the extra distance from the mask. Um, yeah, the little gray here is a little silver here, some botched customization job. See, this, is, this is light gimmick. Oh, yeah, his lights, his eyes still light up. Yes, uh, that was one of the things I liked about the proc is they had the little light light up eye gimmick. So this one is really hard to do because of the way of where it's positioned in the back here. Yeah, the Parakas I believe were the first to start using the uh, brain stem, the light the light piping brain stems. Um, all the others they had their they, they had like more compressed and like you popped it in, you just couldn't pop it out. Um, but yeah, here he is next to Pahatu, so about the same size again, and finally, Kapaka, about the same size. Obviously, Pahatu being the smallest, but yeah. So, let's kind of do a back and back. 
Um, Tahu is a bit bigger, I believe. I'm looking at the brainstem back here. Uh, let me move that. Uh, there we go. Looking at the brainstem back here, and pa and Kapa uh, Tahu is just above. If you were to compare these to the original Toa and Toa Nuva, there would be no comparison again. Like I said, they'd be like up to here. I think I've seen in some videos. In some videos, I think I've seen them in the one video, I should say, I've, I've seen them, and I think it was right about here. So, right here, or something. They've gotten quite a bit bigger, and they've gotten, like I said, gotten quite a bit better with this new, uh, with, I guess, this universal joint system. I'm excited to see what the others are like, and I'm kind of excited to see where else, where else they can go with this. Because I'm looking at three very unique, very different figures, and I'm very happy with all three of them so far. And I'm looking at the others, thinking of buying them at a later date when I, when I can, and I'm definitely going to do that. I think I'm definitely going to try and do that because I will. Because these are the like we're talking about the original six Toas here, the original series. This is a reboot of the original series, and I loved the original stuff. I loved the mysticism, the kind of the tribal nature, and the idea behind this kind of fusion of mythic of these of this mystical kind of tribal stuff with machines. It's a concept that I still would I still wish they could they would have continued playing with instead of going all sci-fi with more more sci-fi and gradually intri introducing sci-fi while taking away the mystical. But yeah, um, with all that said, I will see you guys later.